We'd like to tell you a story about a salesperson. Meet Chris. Everyone said Chris was made for sales. He was outgoing, persistent. His view of sales was that it was merely a matter of convincing people, persuading them, and overcoming their objections. It was all just a numbers game. Chris found a company with products he believed in. So his new company gave him training and all the tools. They told him exactly what he needed to do. But at the end of the day, he still had to be committed to knocking on over a hundred doors a day. Chris does this, and here is one of his typical sales calls. Chris shows up and has only one thing on his mind. I need to sell. The buyer, on the other hand, not so enthusiastic. He's thinking, what do I need to do to not get sold to? So Chris starts the sales call, and he begins delivering his pitch, and you know what? He sounds like every other salesperson there ever was because he uses the script and training that his company gave him. He doesn't do anything personally to connect with the prospect. He's just the company figurehead, telling this innocent and hapless prospect exactly what his company wanted him to tell the prospect, what the company does, and why they're the best. What Chris doesn't realize is that the buyer is trying to figure out who he is, who the salesperson is. Is this a trustworthy guy? Is this guy out for his own good or mine? Chris helps the prospect answer those questions because he acts like everyone else and therefore reinforces the stereotypes. Chris is unaware of how the prospect sees him. He believed he had to be Superman, parachuting in with all the answers. The prospect quickly becomes uncomfortable, crosses his arms, and puts up a salesperson barrier. Chris keeps motoring along, not realizing that all of his talking points are just getting deflected. Even questions aren't getting through. To the prospect, he's just another salesman. And we quickly get to the end of the sales call. No thanks, I'm just looking. When he hears those words, Chris's shoulders sag and all the air goes out of him. In the back of the prospect's mind, the whole time has been the idea that the seller's gain is my loss. And Chris, by sticking to a canned script, never got through that barrier. He just didn't connect. Undeterred, Chris would knock on more doors, and he repeated this over and over and over again. He was doing exactly what his company wanted of him. He used the training they gave him, and he followed their model. And he said to himself, I better get used to it. It's all just a numbers game. You know, Chris actually did make some sales, not because he was that great, but because when you knock on that many doors, you're bound to make some sales. But the rejections kept mounting and he realized that he couldn't keep doing this. So what he did was reflect back on the sales he actually had made, and he realized that in each of these sales, a connection had been formed with his buyer. He needed a way to put this into practice more often. So he decided to become a student of the game, and he wanted to find out, how can I get on the same wavelength with a prospect? How can I emotionally connect with someone on a human level, on purpose? The first thing Chris put his arms around was empathizing with the buyer's skepticism. He realized they put up barriers for very good reasons, and there had to be a way around those barriers. Next, he wanted to know how people made decisions, specifically buying decisions, and this led him to study the human mind. He learned about the left and right sides of the brain. The left is logical, rational, skeptical. It's adept with numbers and information but it's the side of the brain that says no. The right side, however, well, that's creative, imaginative, visual. It's the side of the brain where we build trust. It's also the side of the brain where we say yes. He found the pathway that would get him around the left side and into the buyer's right side, and it was storytelling. It was a way for him to create an emotional connection, a way to educate, to inspire, to be hopeful, it was a way to build trust. He then realized he needed to learn the basic principles of storytelling, how to construct and deliver a well-thought-out narrative. He learned how to craft stories using a proven, universal structure of storytelling. He begins to build himself a toolkit of stories for any sales scenario. Stories about himself, about his company, and how a client could use his company's offerings, about other clients and successes that they've had in the past, and about lessons learned. Storytelling alone wasn't the ends, it was the means. He had to get the buyer's story. 
and he quickly saw that he was not a good listener. He learned he had to listen with more than just his ears. He had to incorporate sight so that he was in tune with the other person's feelings. He had to pay attention to body language. He was given an active listening model that contained the building blocks he could use in real life. The result? He became a more purposeful listener. Now Chris goes back into the field with a new approach. First, he recognizes his prospect's skepticism. Then he relaxes and tells his prospect a story about another person he's helped in the past. That then invites the prospect to tell him a story, and he actively listens. He finds out there's now an open exchange of information and new ideas. An emotional connection has been formed. He then realizes he can repeat this over and over again. 